Lesson 11.2c, Using Subtraction to Solve Equations, Inverse Operations. When an equation contains addition, we can solve by subtracting the same amount from each side of the equal sign. If you missed the previous two lessons, they're linked in the description. The subtraction property of equality states we can subtract the same number from both sides of an equation, and the two sides will remain equal. So that's what we've been doing so far in these lessons for 11.2. We've been doing the subtraction property of equality with addition equations. We have x plus 12 is equal to 37. We can take 12 away from both sides of the equal sign, and that will get rid of the 12. We eliminate it, remove it, and when we take 12 away from the 37, we get a 25. We know that x is equal to 25. A zero pair is a number and its opposite, which when added together will equal zero. We have negative three and positive three. When we add three, we get to zero. When we take away three, we get to zero. Three and a negative three make zero. And if we have negative three and add three to it, we're at zero. They make a zero pair. We can solve the equation and graph the solution on a number line. We have c plus 5 is equal to 9. We subtract 5 from both sides of the equal sign. That's going to eliminate it, create a 0 pair. We take 5 away from the 9 and get a 4. We see c is equal to 4. And we can check by substituting 4 for c. Remember, the question mark above the equal sign means we're not sure if they're equal yet. We haven't found that out for sure yet. So is 9 equal to 9? We can graph it. C is equal to 4. Yeah, 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. So this is correct. Our goal is to isolate the variable to one side of the equal sign, showing us its value on the other side of the equal sign. By subtracting 4 and 2 tenths from both sides, we can eliminate this one create a zero pair, and now the n is isolated. It's all by itself on one side of the equal sign. When we subtract 4 and 2 tenths from 5 and 8 tenths, we get 1 and 6 tenths. We know n is equal to 1 and 6 tenths. By creating a zero pair, we can isolate the variable of an addition or subtraction equation. An inverse is an exact opposite. So if the mom said, did you straighten your room, and the child said, no, I did the inverse, well, the opposite of straightening the room means the child messed the room up more. An inverse operation is an opposite operation, and we can solve an addition equation with an inverse operation subtraction. Because the commutative property of addition states we can add in any order to get the same sum, these equations can both be solved the same way. The order of the variable in the add-in doesn't change the process. We have y plus 10 equals 32, and here we have 10 plus y equals 32. We can add in any order, so it doesn't matter. We're going to try to get the y by itself, isolate it to one side, so we need to get rid of this plus 10. So we can use an inverse and do subtract 10. It's going to get rid of it, make it a zero pair. Now we've only got y on this side, but we need to take 10 away from this side, we get 22. We can see that y is equal to 22. And even if the 10 is written first, we're still going to create a zero pair by subtracting 10 from both sides of the equal sign, and we get that y is equal to 22. Zero pairs are removed from the equation, put the equation into a simpler form, and help isolate the variable to one side of the equal sign. If we have 1,500 plus a is equal to 1,950, we can take 1,500 away from each side to create a zero pair. We get rid of it, it's gone. Now we only have a on this side, it's isolated to one side. We take away the 1,500 from this side, and we get 450. We know a is equal to 450. We're finished with the third part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the fourth part using addition to solve equations. 
Have a nice day, and I hope you'll join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.